EPS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Mark Blunden and this is The Leader. The glamour of international air travel is bouncing back and Heathrow bosses say they've got the passenger numbers to prove it. LHRs revealed on Wednesday that the number of people using its facilities was back above pre-pandemic levels for the first time. Compared to last year, there was a rise of over 22% in the number of passengers passing through its terminals. Airport bosses say more than 7 million passengers took off or landed over September, soaring past 2019's figures of nearly 6.8 million travellers. The biggest increase of nearly 60% or 883,000 was passengers bound for or travelling from the Asia and Pacific region. The numbers boost comes despite significant logistics troubles over the past few months at the world's busiest airports, including a strike by Border Force staff, lots of lost luggage and then a tech meltdown at the Nats Air Traffic Control Service. It also follows Terminal 3 needing to be evacuated on Tuesday after a suspicious bag was found and on Monday Terminal 4 was cleared after a disturbance on the Elizabeth Line. And get ready for more suitcase problems because during this month's half term, 170 members of the Unison Union who maintained the baggage carousels are set to strike over a pay dispute. But before our analysis on that, an update on the Luton Airport fire where a vehicle exploded in a multi-storey car park causing travel chaos for up to 50,000 passengers. The fire rapidly escalated not only laterally but vertically as well Uh, and it soon became clear that the building was becoming structurally unsafe so then we moved to what we call a defensive firefighting position uh, where conveniently the car park was open all sides and then we've attacked the fire you know from from all four sides of the building. That's Andrew Hopkinson chief fire officer for Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue Service speaking at the scene. The current estimates um, based on you know tickets in and out um, is just a shade under 1500 cars. What I don't know is precisely but there is a significant number um, that are damaged, but I don't know what proportion of that 1,500 are, are, you know, are, you know, damaged. Five people were taken to hospital and firefighters spent 12 hours battling the blaze at the £20 million terminal car park too. The early intelligence, there's nothing to suggest that it was anything other than an accidental fire, um, and you know, that, so and it wasn't uh, an, a, an electric vehicle as far as we are concerned, but obviously all that is subject to verification. Now to Heathrow and to discover more about LHR's post-COVID bounce back, the Leader podcast is joined by Evening Standard business editor Jonathan Prynne. Jonathan, what are you reporting on Wednesday? So today we were looking at the latest figures from Heathrow, which put out their passenger traffic numbers every month. And this month, or rather last month, I should say, September, they revealed that the monthly total was higher than the equivalent month in 2019. And that's the first time they've exceeded pre-COVID levels of passenger traffic since the pandemic. So it feels like quite a big milestone. What's your take on why these passengers are returning in such numbers? I think it's a mix. I mean, obviously, once restrictions were ended, then people could start flying again. There was massive pent-up demand over this summer. In fact, throughout this year, there's been huge pent-up demand for people that have wanted to travel. And that's both Brits leaving the country to go to uh, the Mediterranean or wherever, and also foreign tourists coming to the UK. Business has obviously opened up as well. And um, I think it's been well documented that um, there's a lot of foreign visitors in in London at the moment. And um, I mean, London remains or Heathrow remains one of the great hubs of the world. And people are passing through it uh, to catch flights elsewhere and, and, you know, really boosting the uh, level of activity. What's been the state of LHR's finances for the past three years? Well, it's it's been pretty catastrophic. Uh, take away 80% of their uh, passengers, uh, 80% of their revenue, obviously on the back of it. They have huge costs just to maintain the airport and keep it ticking over. So they've been massively in the red since 2020, and they'll continue to be in loss-making this year, and that's going to cause them... Um, they've got a lot of ground to make up, so... Th- I think uh, it's unlikely they'll start making a profit until next year, but then they'll hopefully power on from there. So you think they're going to be back in the black next year? At the earliest, it seems if these numbers and this recovery continues, it seems likely that they will break through back into the black next year. But there's several billions of pounds worth of deficit to make up. 
Let's go to the ads coming up. It's Pastures New for Heathrow's boss, plus boost for road and rail travel. Why not hit follow in the meantime and give us a rating? Welcome back. Now back to our analysis with Jonathan on those Heathrow passenger numbers. Jonathan, according to these figures, the Asia-Pacific corridor has become significant for Heathrow. What's your take on that? Well, there was virtually no traffic from China and from much of the Far East for three years, essentially, while, while they closed their borders. China was the last country in the world, so a major country in the world, to uh, reopen its borders in January. And it's taken a bit of time for traffic to build up as people have had to apply for visas and so on. The Chinese are, and Hong Kong as well, they're starting to come back to the UK, growing from a, a low base. But uh, that's good for London because they're, you know, they're high spending tourists and they've been, they've been greatly missed. And how about the North American markets? Yeah, that's been really strong, um, up uh, almost uh, doubled over the past year. A lot of that is due to the strength of the dollar, uh, Americans finding that uh, the UK and London in particular is, is a relatively cheap place to come and visit. The pound's got a little bit stronger since then, but a lot of these bookings would have been made when when the dollar was really, really strong against the pound, and people thought uh, they could get themselves a bargain travelling to the UK, and they love London anyway, so they don't need any extra incentive, but the exchange rate uh, just sort of brought them out in even larger numbers. And this all comes uh, despite some significant bumps this year along the uh, runway back to, to profit and these numbers. We've got the baggage crisis, Nats chaos uh, and the border force strikes. But yeah. still, it seems to be sort of progressing in the right way. Well, aviation is a, is a very complex in the industry and um, there are always going to be setbacks and um, logistical problems, um, strikes industrial action of various forms so the Nats chaos was was you know unhelpful I think to put it at its absolute mildest but you know these things they last for a day or two or maybe a bit longer but the the, the sort of underlying momentum is is very very strong and is pushing these numbers above 2019 levels for the first time, despite these bumps in the road. You've also reported as well as Heathrow's chief executive is now leaving to, to pastures new. Um, I just wonder if you had any thoughts on sort of how you rate his, his tenure in charge. Yeah, as you say, John Holland Kay is leaving after 10 years almost at the helm. It's been a very tough ride for him, particularly the last uh, last couple of years. But I think overall he's he's done a pretty decent job. Heathrow didn't have the best of reputations when he took it over. If you remember, it had that Heathrow Hell tag a few years ago. I think he's got rid of that. Uh, I mean, Heathrow is not loved by everyone, but it is a highly efficient airport handling, you know, more than the entire population of the UK every year. Um, most of them getting in and out uh, successfully and, and relatively seamlessly. The security situation uh, or, or passing through security has been that experience has been greatly improved and he delivered the third runway which of course has not yet yet been built and who knows I think for a while that was in doubt again because people were saying will will people ever return to flying in the same numbers but they, it appears that they are so I, I think overall he's you know and he he, he got he throw through covid uh, it survived albeit with huge huge losses but that was an incredibly difficult situation to manage I think overall he'll be remembered as a, as a pretty successful uh, boss of Heathrow and big shoes for his successor to, to fill. And just finally, your other story, your, your other transport story you're reporting today, uh, first group saying the rail and bus use is stronger than expected. What, what are they telling you about this? Yeah, first group um, operate a couple of uh, train franchises and uh, you know, loads and loads of bus routes all over the country. And on both on rail and on buses, they're saying demand over the summer was, was quite a bit stronger than expected. So, yeah, that augurs well for them. Obviously, the share price was, was up this morning. People have been in the mood to travel. It's interesting. They, they, they may not necessarily be in the mood to commute, but to, to go on holiday and leisure travel, demand has been huge. And it'll be interesting to see if that uh, follows through in the months ahead.
There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. We're back on Thursday at 4pm. <laughs>